as we continue through this month of December and uh, take opportunities to remember the birth of our Savior, uh, it's always so important that we have our priorities right. Does that make sense? Uh, man, I'm watching commercials and I'm seeing all these ads and, and banners and signs and here's the thing, if they want to have a Christmas sale, I really don't mind that they put Christ in their ad, right? I have no problem with that. Uh, at the same time, though, it's just important that we remember that this is a time to remember the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And whatever's going on with the commercialism around us, that's what it is. Our heart, our focus, our thoughts, our mind on Jesus, as it always should. Does that seem reasonable? And uh, if there are two presents under the tree or 200, they're all going to break anyway. <laughs> but thankfully, the relationship with Jesus Christ is permanent, unfailing, unfading, and it is beautiful, and it is right, and it stays that way. Let's pray as we continue this morning. Dear Lord God, we are thankful for every opportunity to gather uh, to remember the life of our amazing Savior, Jesus Christ. We are thankful that when we speak of Him, we can speak of Him in present tense. Because we serve, bless you, a living Savior. As we continue this morning, and we are reminded of the good tidings of Jesus. Help us as we move through this season to keep the thoughts and ideas and the values of our Savior in the forefront. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray these things. Amen. Amen. Well, our tidings today is tidings of comfort and joy. Uh, you may have heard that in the song they were just singing. Uh, I think that thing goes clear back to like the 16th century. Uh, it's been through many different arrangements and uh, some word changes and things of that nature. Uh, I was reading somewhere where an, um, a reporter had written something about, and this is like in like 1780, you know, I'm, I'm not exact on the date, but it's a while ago. Is that reasonable? It was a while ago. A reporter wrote that there are no Christmas carols in England. Uh, only some mumbling about good tidings. And he was mocking this particular song because it wasn't the traditional Christmas carol that he was accustomed to. Now, today, I can't even imagine not singing this song if you're gathering uh, for a Christmas or if you're uh, doing Christmas carols in your community or, or whatever it was because for us, it's a part of our tradition. And the reality is, brace yourselves, traditions are different for different people. <laughs> My name's Mansell. I'm here to help. That's what it is, man. They're different for different people. And, and for different cultures and different places in the world, traditions are different. And the reality is traditions change. Uh, when I was a youngster, man, our tradition as a family, mom and dad would pack us up, and that's whether we lived in Petaluma or Sebastopol, and we would drive down here to the valley. Uh, we would live, usually, all, usually, we would end up at my grandma's house in Carruthers, and then when she moved up to the foothills here in Madeira, well, we'd end up in the foothills at my grandma's house in Madeira. You're, you're following a trend, right? And we would get there, all the aunts and uncles would be there, all the cousins, and I mean, it was wild, and it was awesome and we ate a lot and we opened presents and man we played hide and seek Carruthers was the bomb for stacking up tumbleweeds and making forts and stuff out of them man we don't have enough tumbleweeds around here but you know, that was a tradition for our family and that's changed as as folks have grown and moved on and uh, done different things you know now the the relatives we still have Christmas up on the hill but some folks are at my mom and dad's house some folks are at the aunt and uncle's house. Some folks are over there. Traditions change. You want to know what does not change? The truth of God's Word. Amen. The truth of the good tidings that the angels brought announcing the birth of the Savior, of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. There's something that does not change. Something else that doesn't change is the love that God has for you. Now, we struggle with that one, right? Love. 
And man, I was thinking about it the other day of talking with students, you know, sixth grade, seventh grade, you're like, you know, you know how it went. Uh, do, do you like want to go out with me? <laughs> oh, okay, I guess I have to. You asked, I don't want to hurt your feelings. Right? Because they're in love for three days <laughs> or two weeks. Right? I was talking sixth grade, seventh grade, come on. Now, I'm not entirely making fun of the youngsters. Yeah, you know I am. <laughs> but we watch movies, we read novels, and we see this actor in one movie, and he's in love with this person, and we see this actor in this movie. Wait a minute, that was her over there, but now they're over there. And boom, I've shared with you so often. You know, I used to watch The Rockford Files when I was a kid. I still like those shows. And early on in the series, every episode, there was a new love interest. <laughs> And as a kid, I was thinking, I have to take my shoe. You get it, right? I was like, he's in love with her. Her, 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 her. Okay? He's from Oklahoma. <laughs> that may explain it. My dad told me once that during the Great Depression, like a hundred plus thousand Okies left Oklahoma, came to California. He says it improved the IQ of both states. <laughs> Think about it. He refers to that in Oklahoma as the fatherland. You get it. <laughs> now, um, where was I talking about? Jesus, salvation, it's unchanging, it's awesome. And as we, we think about these good tidings, so often we sing about these things and the good tidings and comfort and joy, and we're not really sure. It can turn into words, right? Uh, oftentimes, uh, a, a tradition can turn into something that we just do a routine and we lose track of the value and the importance. Uh, thinking about just the song we were just singing, the open con opening part of that chorus, I'm not a musician, okay? The opening words. God rest you merry gentlemen, let nothing you dismay, for Jesus Christ our Savior was born upon this day to save Poor, listen closely, to save poor souls from Satan's power, which long time had gone astray, which brings tidings of comfort and joy. I think that our culture, our tradition here in this country, that when we think of good tidings of comfort and joy, we think about eggnog, we think about that big roast have a roast beast on the table on Christmas Day. When we think about comfort and joy, we think about gifts under the tree and in the sock. And, and when we think about those Christmas movies, It's a Wonderful Life, right? And, and Prep and Landing. We think about these things and we, we start thinking that that's the comfort and the joy. Those things that are temporal and temporary and fleeting. And in reality, the comfort and joy is found in God's Son, Jesus. And so we're going to be looking at some passages uh, starting off in Isaiah uh, 52 7, and then we'll roll into Romans and some other places. And, and we're going to be looking at what is, what are these good tidings. Uh, 52 verse 7 in the book of Isaiah says this How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news, who proclaim peace, who bring good tidings who proclaim salvation, who say to Zion, your God reigns. Now, there is a good tiding, right? Proclaiming peace, proclaiming salvation, shouting to Zion that God reigns. Well, who else should be reigning in your life except for the great I Am? Does that make sense? The God of Abraham, Jack, Jacob, and Isaac. That's who should be reigning in our life. And, and I love when it talks about how beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those. Now, you don't have to raise your hand and just unless you want to, but raise your hand if you get a little bit wigged out about feet or if somebody's seeing your feet or <gasps> having to touch someone else's feet. Now, think about how big this wording is, right? And, and especially in the time frame when it was written thousands of years ago, right? Folks running around barefooted, sandals, etc., um, sharing uh, the road or the paths with beasts of burden. Is that a good way to put it? Oh my goodness, you know what that just made me think of. It's an inside joke. I'm not going to talk about it. 
That's why my dad was not allowed to help with the offering today. I didn't want him to monologue about it. So, how, think about it. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news. Are their feet beautiful? Or are they beautiful on the mountains because of what they're bringing? Man, I think it's the message they're bringing. Good tidings of peace, of salvation, shouting to Zion that our God reigns. Think about it. Every time you step out of your home, if you, ladies, I'm, I'm not being uh, chauvinistic with this comment, but if you're concerned that you don't have just the right pair of shoes to go with that outfit, think about this. If you step out in faith when you leave your home, and whether it's going to the market or the workplace or, or wherever it is you're going, or you get those hot liquids that they sell down on the corner, 41 and 12. I didn't know how much those things cost. Oh, boy, you yeah. hurt me. <laughs> I'm so glad I have a taste for Pepsi. It's a lot cheaper and good for you, too. Does it make you smart like donuts? Yeah. Well, it, I was talking about the scriptures, weren't I? But think about this. When you step out for your day, no matter what troubles... I was almost going to rhyme. It wasn't intentional. I'm not going to do it. No ma matter what troubles may be on your heart or affecting the day to come, but think about this. When you step out in faith and you bring good tidings with you wherever it is you're going, proclaiming peace, proclaiming salvation, and shouting that Zion, to, to Zion that our God reigns, how beautiful on the mountains, right, are the feet of those. Or how beautiful on the chose are the feet of those. How beautiful in the marketplace, at the school, on the school campus. How beautiful, even Fresno. <laughs> Think about it, even in Fresno. Now you know we're not changing what the word says. But you get the idea. Man, we take this story of peace and salvation with us everywhere we go as Christians. This is recorded in Isaiah, man. This is, bless you, way back in the Old Testament and in reminding us of how important it is that we shout to Zion that our God reigns. Now, does that mean that you're in the middle of Walmart and you need to climb on top of a display and just shout it out loud, our God reigns? Well, that's between you and God. <laughs> And I don't know about you, I'm not arguing with God. He definitely pulls rank on everybody else and everything else. Is that a fair statement to make? And, and as, as we're looking at this, though, there are so many different ways to shout to Zion that our God reigns. Oftentimes, the most effective way to shout to Zion that our God reigns, opinion, call it what it is, right? It's through our choices, through our conduct, how we treat other people, how we take steps to mirror Jesus in our everyday walk, in our, I'm going to go there, in our speech, the way that we talk, the way that we, the words that we choose to use, even when we're not at church, even when our mother, no matter how old she is, can't hear us. You, you get where we're going, right? That's how we shout to Zion that our God reigns is by allowing people to see and recognize that we are different and that we have been changed, transformed. Is that a good word to use? All right. Through the power, the love, and the grace and mercy of Jesus. Amen. That's where it's real, people. We're going to roll over here into the book of Romans. You could read the whole chapter, right? I, 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 wouldn't, I would never uh, tell you not to. <laughs> this is the book of Romans, uh, chapter 6, uh, verses 15 through 23. Uh, this set of verses reminds us how important it is that we proclaim peace, that we proclaim salvation. It reminds us why it is that the angels came, as we read last week in Luke chapter 2, the angels came and proclaimed 
uh, how what a, this great thing that a child has been born that would bring salvation. This verse, these verses remind us of how urgent our calling, our task is. This is Romans chapter six, uh, verse fifteen. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law but under grace? By no means. Don't you know that when you offer yourself to someone to obey him as slaves, you are slaves to the one whom you obey. Whether you are slaves to sin, which leads to death, or to obedience, which leads to righteousness. But thanks be to God that though you used to be slaves to sin, you wholeheartedly obeyed the form of teaching to which you were entrusted. You have been set free from sin and become slaves to righteousness. Now I know that the word slaves carries a very negative connotation today. Uh, and I know we already know the answer is raise your hand if you want to be a slave. Okay? Nobody's shooting their hand up. But the idea makes such great sense. When we were reminded at the time these passages were written, slavery was commonplace uh, all over the known world. I mean, it was just the reality that people lived in. And think about speaking in such a way that it would touch someone's heart and life and walk exactly where they were. We have the choice, right? We can live in the bondage of sin. And here's the reality. Without Jesus in our life, without a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, we are slaves to sin. With the ultimate result being death. We kind of just read that, didn't we? And think about this. And, and I believe that it says that through obedience and the understanding and the hearing of the teachings, how we find uh, salvation in Christ Jesus. And you know I didn't quote it directly because I'm not good at that. It's the brain. It don't work so well. I like to blame that on the blonde highlights, but I'm starting to think it's not blonde. It's strange, but life goes on. Through this obedience to Christ Jesus, this relationship with Christ, the scripture describes as being slaves to righteousness. Well, we talk about it a lot, right? One gate and one pathway that's wide and easy to get to that leads to destruction. Another gateway, thank you for the reminder that I wasn't wording that correctly. Another gateway, another pathway that is narrow. A narrow path and a narrow gateway that leads to righteousness. Righteousness through this personal relationship with Christ, God's Son Jesus, who was born of a virgin thousands of years ago in a small town called Bethlehem, in the most humble of situations. Correct? Is that a reasonable way to put it? Bless you. And, and that this call of obedience and being a slave to righteousness is, in fact, a choice. We choose Jesus. We choose as Christians, as believers, as followers of Christ, we choose to live a life that's reflective of His love, His grace, and His mercy. The, the scripture that I opened up with in verse says, 15 says, What then? Shall we sin because we are no longer under the law, uh, but under grace? A lot of people struggle with this thing. And they think, well, I'm a Christian. I've asked Jesus into my heart. Scripture says He forgives all my sin. Now, that is a true statement, right? And some people, unfortunately, have the mindset of, now I can do whatever I want. I've got fire insurance. And it doesn't matter what I do. I have to tell you, that part of the phrase is not biblically accurate nor is it reflective of Christ. Born of flesh and bone man, right? Supernatural God at the same time. Jesus, He was tempted, Scripture tells us, in every way, yet chose not to sin. He chose not to sin because He's obedient to the Word. He chose not to sin because His purpose here on earth 
was to be the sacrifice, let me say this correctly, the perfect, unblemished, right sacrifice for your sin, for my sin, for the sin of all of humanity. For anyone who chooses to call on His name as Lord and Savior, He chose not to sin. That's the model that is set for us. And, and Paul says, of course, as it continues on, right? He says, well, because we're saved uh, by grace, then what? We just sin all along? No. How did he say it? By no means. By no means. We're reminded again and again in the New Testament that we're called to live a life that is different. We're not to con conform to the world, but be to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Our mind is renewed through Scripture, through prayer, through corporate worship, through service to our Lord Savior, Jesus Christ. These passages continue. Verse 19. I put this in human terms because you are weak in your natural selves. Just as you used to offer the parts of your body in slavery to impurity and to every increasing wickedness, so now offer them in slavery to a righteousness leading to holiness. When you were slaves to sin, you were free from the control of righteousness. What benefit did you reap at that time from the things you are now ashamed of? Those things result in death. But now that you have been set free from sin, that's where we say amen, right? Now that you are set free from sin and become slaves to God, the benefit you reap leads to holiness. And the result is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. It's appropriate and right because that's a part of the good tiding, isn't it? That we have salvation available through God's Son, Jesus, born in Bethlehem, born in a miraculous way, born to a virgin. People came and found Him and sought Him out even as an infant to worship Him, to meet Him, to be in His presence. We're still talking about Him today thousands of years later. Now you know that's not normal. He wasn't a king of a country. Well, king of the Jews, right? Wasn't that the heading on the cross where his body was attached to be crucified as he paid the price for our sin? He wasn't a movie star, was he? If you saw that thing, I never saw it. Jesus Christ uh, Superstar, is that what it was? It's not right. He wasn't a movie star, he wasn't an actor, he wasn't the President of the United States. We don't, we're not aware of him having a lot of wealth or a lot of cash hanging on him. We don't hear of him you know, wearing a lot of bling, he didn't have a Mercedes hubcap hanging around his neck. Okay? He was born in the humblest of settings. And yet, thousands of years later, we still talk about Him. We still sing praises to His name. We still refer as Christians back to His Word for true, consistent, unchanging guidance in our walk in this world. Man, people, Jesus is real. The stories that we hear from the scriptures are real. The salvation that is available is real. The enemy that offers destruction and death is real. And it's only through this right relationship with God's Son Jesus that the good tidings are recognized, that we experience comfort, that we recognize true joy that is not fleeting, that does not fade. Seems appropriate to 
roll back to John chapter 3, verses 16 and 17, as we're reminded of these good tidings. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. May as well read 18, right? <laughs> whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because he has not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. I would encourage you to go ahead and keep reading. You're welcome to do so. The good tidings come in the form of an amazing, miraculous, loving Savior. His name is Jesus. Angels sang about Him and sing about Him. They announced His coming. They announced His birth. They went to others to give them their task and job in this world and in this process. As we continue through this time of Christmas, I would encourage you, man, put on some beautiful feet. Proclaim peace. Proclaim salvation. Shout to Zion, right? Our God reigns. Live it in your life. So that it's not just a saying on your shirt sleeve or on your hat, but it's real in your personhood in your, your character, in just the presence of who you are. People will recognize that you're weird, that you're different, that you've changed because of God's Son, Jesus, and the relationship that you have with Him. Let's pray. Dear Lord God, we are thankful for the good tidings that are found in your word. We are thankful that we can have peace and salvation through a relationship with your son Jesus. We are thankful for the Old Testament prophecies that are fulfilled through Jesus. Thankful that salvation is available for the honest asking. As we continue this morning, of course the desire should be that your word is applied in our life and that we would seek to live a life of righteousness and obedience to you, Lord Jesus. In your name we pray these things. Amen. As we lead into this time of invitation, and our musicians come forward. This is a time set aside for you to share whatever decision it is that God has placed on your life. It could be that you're here this morning and maybe you've been a member of a church for a long time or maybe you've never been to church before in your life. It don't matter. Going to church isn't what makes you a Christian. Going to church isn't what removes your sin. Uh, going to church is not what gets you to heaven. What is important is that point in time in your life when you honestly believe in the name of God's Son, Jesus. Call on Him as your Lord and Savior. It could be that you're here this morning and maybe for the first time, honestly, you want to ask Jesus into your heart and become one of His followers. It could be as a new believer, perhaps God is putting the call of uh, baptism or church membership on your heart. Could be as a believer you're here this morning and you're like, I know Jesus. I've been baptized and I'm a member of whatever church. It doesn't matter, right? And, and, and you can say, I even taught Sunday school and man, the reality is my feet aren't that beautiful. I haven't shouted to Zion in forever. I forgot not, to, not only to proclaim peace, but I forgot to live some peace in my own life. As a Christian, we rededicate our life, not because Jesus left us, but because we have chosen to allow ourselves to be distracted of the truth of His calling. And we rededicate our life 
Again, not because he left us, but because we want to come into a closer walk with him. Could be you're here this morning and maybe it's a time when you just need to come forward to the altar and lift up a prayer to the Lord. That's what this time is set aside for. Those of you joining us online can participate as well through the comments, private message, and of course, we can pray no matter where we are, right? Please stand as we lead into this time of invitation.